from Argus Media, this is Driving Discussions, a podcast series focusing on the forces that affect road fuels globally. Greetings and salutations once again. Jason Metko here, spot ticker reporter at Argus. And on this episode, we're coming from the sidelines of the 2023 Argus Crude Summit in Houston, talking with Refinitiv's head of America's oil analyst, Jim Mitchell. We'll be chatting about the effects of the EU's Russian oil ban and how it affects things here in the U.S., look into diesel consumption going into the spring, and any early thoughts on the soon-to-be upcoming U.S. summer driving season. First off, the EU ban has now taken effect as of February 3rd. How do you anticipate that's going to impact gasoline and diesel flows, particularly into the Atlantic coast, Jim? Yeah, great question. Um, Two two very different answers, right? So uh, gasoline, Northwest Europe will continue to send gasoline to the Atlantic coast uh, of the U.S., who is short. Um, as that demand increases, which is going to be pretty much GDP dependent upon that area, uh, they're going to demand more. And the, the only other way to get it is through these ginormous pipelines that come out of Texas here. We're in Houston. Um, and they're, they're pretty much full. So uh, it's going to have to come waterborne. The easiest solution is to come from, and the cheapest solution is to come from Northwest Europe. So from the gasoline perspective, I don't think there'll be much change. On the diesel perspective, that's where we're seeing something, uh, a couple things really interesting happening. With the EU ban on diesel, um, we're actually seeing that the Russian diesel, which we, uh, on, and I have talked about on my podcast as well, uh, it's going to go into the market. The world is structurally short diesel. It's going to different places, which is creating other flows. Uh, the Atlantic or the uh, Gulf Coast in the U.S. has been supplying Northwest Europe diesel for decades and will continue to. The interesting part is that the Gulf Coast uh, volumes are being taken over by the Middle East refiners. Uh, and I, I suspected that was going to be the case. Um, we can see on our system, you can actually see the flows happening. And it's consistent. And uh, when you look at uh, like Argus's uh, pricing, you can see why, right? So Argus creates pricing such that you can see uh, the backstory of why these movements are happening. And it makes perfect sense. Are there any shocks to the system that still might come down the line here, like in the next month or so, next two months? An, an escalation in the Russian-Ukraine war, um, I think we'll have more headline shock than actual energy shock. Um, one of the things that's not being talked about is the addition of uh, Saudi Arabia to BRICS. And hang with me a second, I'll get to how this involves Russia. Sure. But So BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Those five countries are considering five new members, the big one being Saudi Arabia. So if you think about now with this new, and the first thing they need to do is get a new acronym because BRICS I ate. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure that's going to work. But uh, with, uh, with Saudi Arabia in this group, uh, think about what you have. You have number two and number three for oil producers. And then you also have two um, mid-majors with Brazil um, and China producing, right? Mm. And then you also have two ginormous consumers with India and China. So um, I'm not sure when the application actually becomes final, but it appears with senior leaders uh, going to different countries, uh, Xi Jinping going to Riyadh in December. Um, that that piece of the, the membership looks like it's uh, well underway. And I, I'm not sure when the, the actual vote, the five-member vote is on that. Um, that. That will be a big deal. And, and as part of that, um, it looks like China is going to start buying crude in their own currency, yuan, uh, instead of U.S. dollars. That's a huge deal, right? If Saudi Arabia stops selling um, – uh, Aramco, Saudi Aramco, the, the operating company, stopped selling their crude in U.S. dollars. That's $7 trillion of U.S. dollar velocity taken away from the U.S. dollar worldwide, right? That's not great for the dollar. Uh, for for uh, Southeast Asia specifically uh, to be buying crude in yuan, because it's, it's more than just China, right? Um, if, if I doubt that Korea would do it, but they certainly could. Um, uh, Vietnam definitely could. I doubt uh, Japan would, but they certainly could. Uh, it, it creates this regional hub in China for crude oil 
that China is clearly trying to do, right? They set up an exchange a year and a half or, or so ago. Um, it's I, I don't know that that happens in the next month, but clearly a story that's going to become more uh, important, uh, certainly in 2023, but then uh, years ahead as well. Jim Mitchell is our guest. This is Driving Discussions emanating live from the sidelines of the 2023 Argus Crude Summit. Jason Metco with Mr. Mitchell here today. I want to get back to diesel. We were talking about that a few moments ago. Yeah. It wasn't as cold, thankfully, this winter thankfully. here in the United States. Yeah. Spring planting season's nigh upon us. What are you seeing as far as that might be concerned this year? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So when you look at the refinery outages um, in the U.S., they have been pretty much a, a, a greater outages. Uh, I think it, it maximizes sometime between now and about the beginning of March. And then it starts to come back online through about June. Um, what's interesting about that is that China is going the exact opposite way, right? So they're at full capacity now, and why not if you're buying this cheap Russian crude? Right. But they start to come off uh, about in May through about October for maintenance. Uh, the interesting part about that, China is exporting a lot of product, uh, specifically jet, into the West Coast U.S., which is kind of important. Now, you, you talked about diesel in the U.S. Um, uh, I look at all of the Americas. Since the U.S. is an exporter to more than just Northwest Europe, we, are, we do export to Brazil and then to Mexico as well. As we go into planting season, uh, so we're sitting here about the middle of February, as we start to look um, eh, the end of March and into April, um, remember that's when Brazil, for example, is starting to go into their winter season. Right, so Brazil has serious um, hydro issues, right? So they're short electricity, so they very likely will be importing diesel uh, for their winter, our summer. Okay. So the, the planting season and this kind of shoulder month in Brazil are happening at the same time. Um, is, it, is it supportive? Yeah, absolutely. A couple more minutes here with Jim Mitchell on driving discussions. This might be too far out in advance to talk about, but Summer driving season is going to be here before we know it. That's a big, big time for consumers to get out there. They notice the gas prices. Yeah. Do you have any early thoughts on what we might be seeing this summer, Jim? So um, I've maintained that we're, we're probably in this grind higher kind of um, market. So do we, do we see it go to $5 uh, in Texas? So an, an average, so we, at last month, last week's average is around three fifty five. dollars do we get over $5 on a U.S. average? I doubt it. Um, it's certainly possible, but it, not very likely. Um, I, I think we probably grind from here up, up probably somewhere a little bit under $4 on an average for the U.S. and then recede and then possibly uh, uh, incline into the end of the year. But uh, it, it's not going back to $2. Um, I think we're, you can expect uh, some pretty good volatility. Uh, in this time frame, there's uh, some big macro events that will affect the price of crude and the price of gasoline and diesel. Jim, we know you're a very busy man. Thanks for doing this and uh, hope you can come back someday. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. He is Refinitiv's head of America's oil analyst, Jim Mitchell. And we thank Mr. Mitchell for taking some time with us here on Driving Discussions, a production of Argus Media, coming this time from the 2023 Argus Crude Summit in Houston. And that'll do it for another edition of the podcast series. This reminder to check out our previous episodes and for more information on Argus's global refined products coverage, visit argusmedia.com forward slash oil dash products.